Hello, it's Kazu, and behind me you see the multi-item sorting system I showed in last video. And since I had a lot of comments asking for a tutorial, this is the tutorial video for it. So this is an example of uh, decoration for the build. It's exactly the same system as in the other video, just prettier. And in this uh, video we will go through every part of the system and uh, tips on how to build it in survival. And I explain a bit in deeper and how, how does it work. If you want a shorter version of the uh, characteristics of the system, I send you to the first video where I talk about this. Hey, I just finished editing this video and I just wanted to warn you that this, it is very long and with a lot of explanation. Um, so the system is actually quite complex, so if you don't feel very comfortable with redstone, well, you can try it, but I would maybe advise to go for a simpler system. And otherwise, well, keep in mind that there are the, um, the uh, chapters that will help you find especially the parts that you're interested in. You just don't want to waste your time with a very long explanation that are maybe not useful for everyone. Okay, so we are back in the void world and I will show you how to build um, first the normal slices. So we will do four of these and then the bulk slices and then we will go to the starting mechanism or the filling minecart mechanism and we will afterwards talk about other small systems of uh, the sorting. So I'll first show you how to build it and then I'll go through the explanation. So first we put the three hoppers that take out the blocker items there. Uh, then on these one we will have two high blocks. There we have soul sand and then we have rails that go like this. And we can remove these and the uh, Diagonal rails need to be waterlogged, so we need to waterlog all of them. Afterwards, we have a soul sand here. This will be the main rail line, and a redstone block here just to power these rails underneath. Um, then I'll put um, glass block just here and to prevent uh, water from flowing I'll put glass fence uh, panes there and this also need to be water sources so the bubbles need to show um, then we have scaffolding on top of the redstone and one to the back there so this is the front this is the back and uh, yes, all of this also need to be waterlogged, but I'll do it afterwards. Let's do the um, uh, white filisters. So the last slice will not be whitelisted because it will be the, the last slice of the system. So the no category slice. Um, but these three will be. So we place target block like this. Uh, then four blocks like this with redstone everywhere. And on top of these target blocks, we will have the pistons that will push the rails, or put the rails on the track. Uh, but obviously they will be there. Um, and I alternate between powered rails and, um, de and detector rails because uh, so I, I don't need to power the powered rails if I do this line too long. Um, and for the last uh, slice, I will just have a glass block here and an amethyst cluster uh, to align the it box correctly. And yeah, it will fall uh, through there. Put the glass block here <coughs> and uh, then we can put the chests on top of these rails. I'll put them this way, double chests, and these will be the filter chests. Um, on top of the piston, there needs to be a 
block, uh, so full block, but I put uh, crafting tables there because then they are handy to um, see or to access. Here I need slabs and here I will read the signal from the uh, filter chests and there I need blocks again. So we will do now the track behind. So we have to climb diagonally for five blocks like this all the way. And then uh, now I will want to lock also the scaffoldings and rails. So I put uh, panes here so the water doesn't flow and I need to water lock all of these and also the rail track like this yes and here i can put also yeah it's okay great on top of these diagonal we have salt sand and then we can place all the powered rails oh i forgot um here we obviously need to put the hoppers that will fill the filter chest again, not here. Um, here we will put a block actually. Okay, I can now remove the top uh, rails here and here I need to have uh, a bot cut with rails. So I do this, uh, not here actually, here it can be flat, it's not important. And uh, also I need to power these rails, so I can put uh, levers somewhere here. Doesn't really matter where. Um, and on top of the slime, I put honey blocks because honey blocks have a slightly smaller hitbox, so I can can jump on this edge, and the minecart can see also put one item in the hop. Then we will start with the storing. Uh, chests so i will have four high uh, storing um rows <coughs> columns through the side and oh there also And uh, the hoppers behind, so that the items can go down. And then here I have um, an overflow line. So this is the overflow line. And uh, the, these hoppers need to look into the overflow line so that if one um, uh, slice is full, then the item just go to the overflow. On the overflow line, I can put uh, compasses, and on these hoppers, I have to put double chests, and these will not be accessible, but these will be the buffer chests, so they will be filled with double hopper speed, like this, and uh, drained with single hopper speed, so it, uh, yeah, it enables the system to work a bit faster than than it should, and yeah, it's more compact. Uh, also, it's the on these chests that I read um, the signal for uh, to know if a slice is active or not. So I put uh, stairs like this. This is just because uh, I need to be able to open the chests. And then I read the signal from these uh, buffer chests and I uh, use it to show it with a lamp. Uh, like this. So these are the lamps that we see in front and that show if the system is active because uh, if the slice is active because if the slice is active there will be items in this chest. So now I can put um, bowels here so I can... this is where the slices are not uh, the same but uh, offset from each other so bowel needs to be on one side and then, then the other 
And uh, on top of these, now I have double hopper speed on these hoppers that I just placed. So here I can put a uh, hopper down and then I, I still have double hopper speed. Uh, then I also need to have a hopper line that will carry the um, uh, minecart hoppers that will be yeeted here. So this would be this hopper line. And here I can directly put hoppers on top. Uh, and here I will put the barrels like this and hoppers showing this way. Cauldrons with lava needs to be on top of these four hoppers and obviously they need lava in them. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, like this. I can put now rails there, can be powered or not powered, uh, can be any rails, doesn't matter. Um, on top of the cauldrons, I will put chains, one block above. And now I will confine, confine every um, well, unit. So I put blocks on every side of the rails, uh, on the on the front, uh, on the sides, uh, when you end your slices, you also need a block. Here we'll put a glass block so we can see. But yeah, otherwise items could, could uh, drop out of the system. And I will even put slabs on top of... Okay, now a bit more logic. Uh, so we will put blocks here. On top of the blocks, there will be comparators that look into other blocks and on the other side of the blocks there will be torches uh, then we will have pistons looking up up and on top of the pistons we will have blocks and behind the blocks we will have again blocks with comparators this time set on two ticks and these will again look into blocks that have torches on them and that activate a block that has torches on the side. And then we have, I think, pistons. Yep. So we have pistons on top of the unpowered torches. And this will send the minecarts. We also need a signal from outside so we will see later how to generate this uh, signal but basically it's just an observer line that will run through all the slices and that will power these blocks that can be there or not if the block is re retracted now we will do the minecart destacking system i don't really remember which where i found it but it's pretty cool um here we need mangrove roots. You will see later why. Uh, well, just it's because it's a it's a cool block to put water in it so it doesn't flow. Um, and we also need blocks diagonally here. And then we need to put rails like this. So these are curved powered rails. Then we have detector rails there, then again powered rails, and these two needs to be normal rails, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, also I put again uh, the, some glass panes here and here, because you'll get it, uh, the rails are waterlogged again. And it's again the trick, well, same as down. Oh, I forgot actually to waterlog these rails. These curved rails need to be waterlogged. That's important. And here we use the trick where if you have a source here, rails there and a source there, then the source is flowing. And this is used to bring the minecart on to the honey block and then back. And here we use exactly the same trick. So here we have flowing water uh, in one block. Um, okay, I can remove these rails now. Um, I need to put a line of blocks here. 
and I need a tra uh, an iron trap door to be placed like this so when you activate it it needs to face this way so place them from the front there uh, then I also need slabs uh, in front of the pistons they need to be down uh, yeah uh, lower slabs then I just have to bring the minecarts here, so I put blocks all the way there, here also, here, and oops, here, and then scaffolding like oops, like this, so it is on the same level as these blocks, and blocks on top. Uh, then I will put the rails. Oh, I had them already. Um, like this. And the last ones will be activator rails. And this is because um, I want to disactivate the the minecarts uh, minecart hoppers when they are stocked here because you can have a lot of minecart hoppers there so it's better to lock them before they and they are in the in the stack there and they will stay locked also it's yeah it's really important to put this uh, here i can put levers but i won't put them all the way i will just put redstone you can put levers everywhere um and i think we are done Okay, no, obviously not, uh, because the water columns are missing. Uh, but this is, this is really straightforward. So we put just glass blocks like this. And on the other side, oops. Oh. on these sides I don't need to go that far up and uh, now I will do the trick with the kelp because it's easier in survival uh, so I can put uh, sources just on the top there and then use the kelp to well, I grow kelp everywhere to until the top. To the top. And uh, now I break the kelp. And I should have bubbles everywhere. Uh, yeah. At the end of the build, check that the bubbles are really go all the way up. This could be a problem otherwise. Uh, oh, also, yep take this and now we are almost done actually it, it it's done it will walk uh, this way but if you want to use the security systems here you will need a bit uh, of signaling and uh, that's why we will add uh, so it's not mandatory but uh, recommended uh, we will add pistons here with redstone blocks attached to them and we will have blocks uh, here and redstone dust uh, going through there. But uh, keep in mind that uh, this actually limits the width of the slices because if you do it more than 15 uh, uh, wide, then the signal won't go through anymore because the maximum signal of a uh, redstone is uh, 15 so you would have to make one free spot uh, to have a comparator here and then you can continue with your redstone line uh, keep in mind just so that's it for the normal multi-item sorting slice uh, maybe i'll show you um, how to just the interface so here's my floor and um, here I put some trapdoors like this and just so I don't have a gap here I also put some trapdoors like this 
and then uh, I have access to the filter chest here. Obviously I would have to fill the filter chest, so I'll show you that uh, quickly there. The, so the level of the filter chests always need to be the same, um, and but it depends, like the amount of items here depends on the number of items you have. And also if you have 16 stackables like this, then uh, yeah, it's not the same number here. The best is to fill this up until you hear uh, the piston moving and to check it, uh, you remove what items. And as, as you hear there, uh, the piston is retracted and put in again. That's a good sign. Uh, also make sure that you remove a 64 stackable but because if you remove this one and it works then maybe it won't work for 64 stackable okay let me quickly go through the input outputs of the system so the minecarts input would be here so um, here you can do whatever you want uh, there will be the minecart filling system basically um, and also it's very important that the first block uh, that is outside of the system here needs to be also waterlogged so it slows down the minecart enough uh, for the system and uh, yeah um, then you also have the overflow here so you can do again whatever you want with it but just keep in mind that there will be there might be items there that you need to treat um, then here you will have the minecart hopper uh, flow or one of them. This would be the just the minecart hoppers that are yeeted here. So just one fifth of the minecart hopper flow. And here you will have all the rest of the minecart hoppers. So this would be the fill items because basically when a, a minecart hoppers comes in, uh, I'll show you quickly. Uh, it has four filler items and uh, a certain amount of items you want to sort. And these four will be absorbed here. So you need to do something with them and bring them back to the to the beginning, actually. And the uh, minecart hopper itself, that the entity there will be broken here and absorbed here. Okay, so for the working principle of this, uh, so I filled the filter chest and uh, I put one item that is actually filtered in there. And I also need to power the rails. So the hopper minecart will go underneath this chest. It will absorb all, the only item it can absorb. So a stripped Bruce log. If I absorb it, it will remove the, um, the rail underneath. And then since it's also, it's like a bit lower and it will attach to the rail there. And then uh, will directly go up here. Here with the flowing water source, it will be pushed against the honey block. So it will deposit one item and since here it al already drained all the four uh, blocker items the only item it's remaining is the 33 spruce uh, tree uh, spruce log why 33 because it absorbed one here so basically here you put the one that you absorbed back in and it resets the slice and when it has done that it just goes all the way up there it's redirected there here it is stacked and disactivated and then um, basically you have a clock that activates all, all of these. So if I activate it once, you'll see it does that continuously. And it does it only if uh, there is not items that sh discharging here. So if I do it manually, if this hopper is full, then it will retract this block. And then this signal won't go through on, on this slice anymore. So it will go everywhere, but not on this slice. This means that the hoppers, that, uh, the minecart hoppers that are, st that are stocked here won't move until this is empty again. And then the signal will send again only one minecart hoppers through this. Um, yeah, I can show it to you in action. So it reset to the slice. No, it will do that. Obviously, I have no external signal, so I need to to make it manually. 
then it sends the items there and as you have seen the hoppers the my it, items have been absorbed they will stay here for a while until they go down and when they this is empty then this will be go out and all the items are here so now for the bulk slice uh, we will do the same thing again um so the back part white uh the white listers are basically exactly the same so we have again these three hoppers that absorb the blocker items with two blocks on top of these and one source and on top of these and the rails again we remove these ones we need to waterlock those a uh, redstone block on top of these and source and on top of these here we have oh, let's do an alternating of powered and uh, detector rail um there we need some glass block to contain the water Uh, on top of this, we need scaffolding like this. Um, the blocks, and here we have the exactly the same thing as before. So we have, oops, diagonal blocks there. Here we'll do all all slices uh, filter it because it's unlikely that your um, no category slice will be a bulk slice so yeah um, but you can do it redstone dust here then we need uh, the pistons and slab uh, slabs here and then we also need the chest or I'll copy from there. Uh, here we need blocks, can be any solid blocks. Um, and also here. And then we just need to read the signal from the filter chests. Uh, then we again need hoppers that go into the filter chest and honey blocks on top of the well let me first place the rails this time we will not go up but straight for five blocks and then we have a source on there and uh well Rails are placed like this. And we need to power them. You can put these levers anywhere. <laughs> I just remove these to put the honey blocks. And yep. Oh, don't forget to to per, to waterlog all of this. So this, this, whoops, not this. Um, this block. Okay, so it waterlogged everything, I think, yes. Um, and also these rails need to be waterlogged, similarly to here. So that, that, there, and again we have flowing water there. Um, now it gets a bit different, oh, it gets very different from there because we will have the bulk display. 
So first we have um, hopper line here, that is just draining the empty shulkers, shulker boxes. Okay, so now for the shulker box display, we will put glass blocks blocks there, repeaters on two ticks like this. Uh, we will have uh, observers wait, looking into the repeaters. And we will have pistons looking down like this. So the piston will push the observers down. And here we have sticky pistons and that have two sticky blocks on them. But since every slice need to be separated from each other, uh, like independent from each other, you need to alternate between slime and honey. And yeah, slime and honey blocks. And uh, here you can put any solid blocks uh, or even non well, any blocks. Uh, on top of the pistons, you will have a node block and an observer that looks up like this. For the pistons, you need uh, some non movable blocks uh, like uh, glazed, any glazed terracotta will do. And uh, here you need a uh, repeat, uh, no, a comparator to read the content of the shulker box that will be there. And then we need again solid blocks here, here, and here. And here you can put repeaters on four ticks. And then to observers like this, that uh, look that will activate the dispenser that will be there looking down. And on top of the dispenser, you will have a hopper looking down. For displaying the first shulker box, it's not automatic, so you need to have buttons there. And whenever you have one one dispenser that would, has a shulker in it, you can just uh, dispense the first shulker. And afterwards, if a shulker gets emptied, then it will be automatically refilling. Uh, but the first one is not. Uh, here you need uh, some chests just to store uh, full shulker boxes. And on top of the chest, you have hoppers. And on top of the hopper, you have a composter with a sticky piston that pushes the composter um, to the front. And in front of the composter, you actually need the shulker box. So we first have um the dispenser that will dispense the shulker box and then you actually need to place the first empty shulker boxes like this then to fill the shulker boxes you need uh, obviously hoppers and uh, this one needs to look into the shulker box this one needs to look down and the one on top of it needs to look to the side and or here we have targets blocks, so we look into the target blocks. Here we will have observers, and uh, these will look into. Well, we have. Okay, I build it a bit oddly. Uh, I use the. Um, uh, I use the uh, tweakeru. Uh, rule to place items into each other so if i do this it will look into the dropper uh, the dispenser but otherwise you would have to first place the dispensers like this and then uh, the droppers are looking down like this so yeah i just used the tweaker resetting and then i also need dispensers not droppers, sorry, uh, looking down here. So you can place the, them like this, but I will place them like this. So just to be clear, this looks here and this looks here. And these droppers uh, have the empty shulker boxes in there. 
though I have a hopper line that runs on top here and that fill all of the these droppers. Uh, also here I will have observers looking into these uh, droppers. So again, whoops, I use Tweakaroo. Here I have observers uh, that look into a sticky piston. Behind the sticky piston I have a normal piston and one block above the sticky piston. Whoops, no wrong direction. I have observers looking this way. Then I have also observers looking down here, observers looking to the side here, and sticky piston looking down there. I have blocks here and here, and the port blocks there, and I have repeaters on one tick looking to the front. So back to the front here, I used a trapdoor just so it I hide the hoppers there, uh, but it's handy to still have access to them if you want to know what's going on. Um, so all three wide there. You need normal blocks. Uh, in the build I used light blocks. Um, and so it needs to be full blocks, however. And here I have comparators. Here I have again full blocks. Uh, but I use uh, spruce because it looks nicer. Um, and here, here I have four blocks again. And then just uh, redstone dust here, all the way here. And yes, this system is not for me. Uh, just to, to yeah, I might put it in the description if I remember where I took it from. But yeah, I didn't build this. And now it's very similar to the normal system. So we are back to the buffer chests that are here. And then again, same thing. We have double hopper speed here. So we can use uh, barrels. I uh, like barrels, sorry, like, um, oops, this. Come on, doesn't matter, but <laughs> it looks nicer. Uh, and hoppers like this, and then I have the double hopper speed hoppers like this. Can put again rails on top of these hoppers. Then I need the um, minecart hopper draining line there. You can put normal hoppers here. I need barrels. And uh, on top of these barrels, cauldrons with lava. Oh, on top of these hoppers I just placed, I have cauldrons with lava. Uh, all of them. And then I can just confine the spaces again. Oops, I need this one. And I put glass on the size. Oops. So it's here. I need the chains one block above. And uh, the, also the trap, uh, the slabs here so that no item can go out. And, and yes, basically now uh, it's the same thing again. So we read Signa from there. We into, whoops, a block, into a redstone torch, into a piston looking up into a solid block we have the observer line going 
this way or the other way, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I have the reading on here on two ticks. That's two ticks. Uh, then I have torches here, blocks here, torches here, distance here. Whoops. And yeah, the destacking system is the same also. So blocks there. Uh, mangrove roots here, blocks here and here, uh, put the rails, so I need all three types, well powered, powered, and I just need to curve them upwards, um, then I have the water so I will put some canes there and there oh okay and water all the way there on top of the water I have blocks with the trap door From this side it's important and then uh, I just have slabs on top of the pistons I have blocks all the way here here and also here yeah I can put the scaffolding also there blocks here blocks here and activator and uh, powered rails. So powered rails like this, activator rails like this. And then I need to power those and power these. I forgot the light indication so it's just in in front of the um, buffer chest i need a block there uh, i need slabs there so i don't cut the signal and then blocks again and the light here so the light is slightly more uh, uh, slightly higher and here obviously the comparators uh, sorry, oh, you can put the light here or here, doesn't both work. So depending on the design you want to uh, to decorate. Uh, also, I didn't align this correctly because as you can see, the source sound is here and uh, scaffolding is here. So I have to put this back one and I also put it downwards uh, one lower. So I don't have to go that high with the water source, water color. Um, but it's the same thing. Put lever here and just blocks like this. And like this. Now I just need to do the water columns so yeah this will activate stuff is it no it doesn't change anything okay perfectly Again, I will use the same technique as there with the water sources and the kelp. So I put uh, water sources there and then I take kelp and I will grow it from here. 
And then I can break it there and it will generate bubbles all the way up. And then, like this, the system will work. Um, but again, if you want to use the signaling, like the security systems there, you will need some signaling. So here the signaling is easier. You just, uh, so here we put composters just for lag efficiency. Uh, we put blocks here and slabs here. It's important that they are slabs, otherwise they will uh, bud this uh, dropper. Uh, we put redstone here, we put repeaters here, again important that there are repeaters, and redstone to uh, line here. And same thing as there, the redstone line can't be longer than 15 blocks, so if you want to build it more than 15 blocks you will need one free space, and then you can continue your line like this. Finishing touches, we can put uh, carpets on top of these hoppers. Uh, we can put uh, trapdoors like this, and then your floor would be here. So as you can see, the filter chests here are lower down than than on the normal slice. And uh, oops, yeah, <laughs> don't fall in the hole. Uh, but you can access them from from there still. So for the explanation. I don't really have a lot to say. It's exactly the same thing as the normal slice, uh, but instead of uh, the minecart will go up there, will still be stacked there. So this is exactly the same as the other slice. The only difference is instead of being put in the slice directly, it's fill in one sh filled in one shulker that is accessible from here. So all the items will be there. And uh, afterwards, when the shulker is, is full, um, it will be um destroyed and then stored there or more precisely in this dispenser and when you activate this dispenser whoops uh, the shulker will end up here and when the shulker is so that's that it has items in it but uh i put another shulker here if i remove uh oh wait I copy this shark and put it there. And if I remove the items from there, then it will automatically replace it with a new shulker from this, this dispenser. And the uh, empty shulkers end up here. So input outputs, you have, well, this, this is empty shulker boxes that needs to be brought back to the shulker box storage. Uh, you also have empty shulker boxes that need to be provided here for for the display. Um, you have still the minecart hoppers here and also down there, the other side, so here. Um, and well, your minecart hopper input will be here. Again, you can do whatever you want with it. It's important that this rail is waterlogged too. And yes, that's it. So now we will talk about the input mechanism. And so this takes the shocker that we put in the system, displays them there, and then uh, well sends the minecarts with specific item content into the slices. So we will build it together. So we need four blocks like this, then uh, one dispenser here and one uh, hopper that goes into the dispenser there. Uh, all of these are powered rails. Here we have a curved rail. Here we have a solid block. Here also solid block, Here two solid blocks. Here we have two repeaters on four ticks um, and here redstone torch, here redstone dust, um, here we need the repeater on three ticks, uh, here block and here two redstone um, 
uh, dusts. So as you can see, this is a clock that um, activates the minecart uh, dispensing. And this is, well, I'll talk about this later, but uh, yeah, I have one issue with that. Um, so let's stop the clock uh, by putting a block here and a torch on top of the block. Now we can put the minecart hopper storage. So we have one hopper facing down here, one hopper facing into it there. And then, uh, well, I put five double chests. This should be uh, enough for the use we were gonna have. Uh, if you don't use the security systems, maybe you will need more. I don't really know, but I think it's plenty. So here uh, we will put the golden pressure plate and this is where the items will end up um, before being taken by the minecarts. Uh, then I have two solid blocks there and one rail here and I can put uh, glass blocks everywhere here and here. So now I need one, two, three, four hoppers and then one droppers looking up and the hoppers need to be in the other direction like this. On top of the first hopper I have a mine, um, cold one with lava so I break the mine cards and then I can put one stair like this, one um, slab like this, I can put a glass block there. Uh, also I need a water block, a water source uh, on the rail so it floats and all the items end up on the pressure plate and then uh, we can put one two um wait no this last one needs to be a dispenser here i will have one observer looking this way and then a second one looking into the dropper tower uh, here i can put a uh, compost for lag effect efficiency again and on top of these three I can put uh, blocks uh, with the uh, rails we will put afterwards. So let's put an observer looking up here and a block here with the redstone dust. We will also put a block diagonally here and then I can have my uh, rails this needs to be an activator rail, this two and the two others need to be powered rails and I actually need to power them like this. We will put blocks here and here and the redstone dust here and here I need an iron trapdoor. Oops, that is looking this way so when it's activated it goes up like this. Hey, it's me from the future and I forgot to mention something really important at this point. Uh, so I'm a bit further in the tutorial, but um, when we you build this, uh, keep in mind that this system right here, so the trapdoor and the rails is directional. So you can build this only in the direction um, east or west. So in these two directions, it's okay. If you build it like this, uh, so if you have the, whoops, if you have the rails, uh, curving like this then it won't walk it's really important uh, to keep that in mind uh, then the unstacker here will will not walk correctly then i will have one dispenser here that dispenses the shulker uh, box and uh, well, one hopper that looks into it from this side i will have um, a hopper line like this and uh, well, let's do it one longer and then I will put a dropper here. But basically this will be, now I will put um, a hopper line again here. This is uh, the um, empty shulker boxes that will go through there. And I read the content of the shulker box here into a block. Then I have a clock there, so I need one redstone torch here to 
power these rails. And uh, one redstone dust here. And this is very important. This redstone dust right here needs to be in dot mode. If you don't put it like this, uh, so it needs, if it's across, it will not work. So it's important to right click so that you see only a dot. And, uh, and then I have a two tick clock here. So, or three tick clock. Um, so I have a redstone dust here, a torch here, and something like this. So this will send um, chalkers until one is full. To stop this clock, uh, we will read a signal from here with a comparator and a torch here and the block there so this stops the clock and it will only activate if there's something in the dropper a dispenser then i also need something to break the shulker box when it's empty so i will have one piston here and uh, it will be quasi connected with this block and to act to uh, update it i need a note block here and it will be powered by this observer that is pushed by a piston like this. Now I need to wire all of this. So I will put two blocks here next to the golden pressure plates and one, one block lower like this. Uh, here I put the piston with the observer like this here i have a new block with a two tick repeater uh, and here i will have a pulse lengthener uh, so a comparator and torches like these and i need a trap door that will uh, indicate uh, that will activate the whole uh, system for the first activation, I also need a system. So I have here a block with a portic repeater. Oops, um, an observer looking into this, oops, into this repeater. And a block looking, facing the this observer. Uh, here I have two blocks, and then I will just have a nether clock uh, here. So, two hoppers facing each other like this. Um, one redstone block here, one piston here, one piston here. And again, two blocks with the comparator and a redstone dust. I'll put the items at the end so that it works. I'm sorry, this needs to be a normal piston. Like this and to power this uh, pulse lengthener there is uh, one node block here one observer oops observer there and one node block here so this will just send the first uh, yeah and there's no items in it so it doesn't go back but yeah. I also add a bit of storage here. This is just if we send a lot of shulkers, they can accumulate here. And this would be the input. Okay, I will just add one alarm here. So with a, a repeater, uh, with a comparator here, and um, hopper clock here, and a node block there. Um, to indicate if this chest is empty and that's a good occasion to fill up the chests so all of these need to be filled with minecart hoppers and there needs to be one minecart hoppers in in this dispenser it will always refill one so this is good and uh, yeah so i'll fill this up quickly
because everything is full uh, here. I also need to put up minecart hoppers here. And uh, what's important is that the first two, I need to place them manually. So I will place two minecart hoppers here. So one and two, and these will recycle all the time. And then I will just put nine in there, could put uh, like fill everything up, but it's not uh, mandatory. And finally, I also need items in there. So I will put uh, seven redstone dust. Oops, I don't know how many I put. Perfectly seven. But this uh, depends on the time it will take to send the first mine cards. I think less than seven is not good, but you can put more. It's not a problem. Concerning Input and outputs. Uh, I have here a minecart hopper input. So basically all the minecart hoppers I get from the slices need to go back in there. Uh, here I have an output of empty shulker boxes. So I need to send them to the empty shulker box storage. Um, here I have an input of full shulker boxes. So basically the things I want to sort uh, come uh, in this hopper. And this is a closed loop. so. There's no interaction with anything out from outside. And finally, here I have the minecart with the uh, four. So what comes out of here is four blocker items and whatever it uh, they absorbed from here. So maybe like uh, can be also a full stack of items. Uh, it can be one item. It can also be zero because um, if there's no items there, I think this will still send or has a chance to still send one minecart. So we have some edge cases that we need to treat. So this is the first part of the input uh, mechanism. And then I have a few extra things that, that uh, treat uh, the exception I just talked about. Um, and here I put them all on top of the, the part we just built, but it's not, uh, you, you can put them when I, wherever you want, it's just uh, useful because then I can like recycle the item easily by just putting them in the uh, shulker box again. Uh, so I will show you how to do this, uh, but uh, keep in mind that you can just do this uh, somewhere else. So first we will treat uh, these three cases. So either when we have a full stack or a full stack of 16 stackable or, oops, sorry, or um, uh, non-stackable items. So these items all end up here and it is possible that it absorbs a, a full stack or a non-stackable. And these are not sortable in our slices as they are. So because they need to absorb one item from the filter chest, so uh, you will need to take out at least one item so that uh, the minecart hopper can still absorb one item. And to do this, uh, we will just absorb the one item and recycle it through um, the, the sh well, to the, this system here. Uh, here we will have a shulker box. Uh, you, you don't have to put it there, but I'll just put it there so we we know um, so it, that we know where it will be. It's easier to understand. And um, then. So then I will have one hopper looking into this uh, shulker box, uh, barrel there, a hopper looking there, and then I will have an output here with a hopper looking down. Um, why do I have two direction? It's because either it's a non-stackable uh, item, so I just want to recycle it so it can go with the next batch, or it is a non-stackable item and then I don't want to recycle it because it will recycle indefinitely. So I send it to the unstackable uh, storage. And for this, I need a filter. I will put one glass block here. Needs to be glass so that we don't lock the hopper underneath. Uh, then I will do a four long diagonal there, a three long diagonal here. I have one torch here, one um, dust here, one comparator here to read the content, one dust there and there, and then one repeater here. 
This is the unstackable uh, filter. So all the unstackable will end up in this hopper and all the stackable items will just be recycled in the shulker box and absorbed by the minecarts again and sent back. So basically, if I have one full stack, it will send uh, first uh, first th uh, 63 items and then in the next batch, it will just send the last item that remains. And where do I get these items from? Uh, well, from on top of there, uh, because the minecarts we send here will go over this uh, hopper and uh, yeah, they will absorb only the one item, but how do I do I do it so that I absorb this item, not the first one? Uh, well, I have to absorb all the minecarts before, so I need to do one, two, three, four, then absorb one item, and then put all the four minecart hoppers in again. And to do this, uh, we have a track here uh, with the rails. And uh, we will put hoppers looking down here and all the track continues there. Then we have uh, blocks all the way here with redstone dust on top of them. In front of here we have a glass block with a detector uh, rail on top. Uh, here can put a normal block. Uh, with a comparator that goes into a block and a torch like this. This enables us to unlock these hoppers only if the signal strength of the minecart is 15. So here I have a subtraction going on. So only if we are in these cases, uh, well this with a uh, one more item and this with one more item. Uh, the, um, it will unlock all these hoppers and then it will absorb one minecart hopper, one minecart hopper, one minecart hopper, one minecart hopper, and the last item we want to extract here that will go into the system there. And the rest will, well, the minecart hopper will recycle here, it will fall down and then go back underneath all these hoppers and it will absorb again uh, the one um the, sorry the, the one minecart hoppers uh, uh to fill up the first four slots again here i can reroute um i can connect the two lines together so i will do this like um let's see we go up like this, down like this, does this match, oops, uh, so, yeah, I need one more block like this, okay, and there I can go up, and I need normal rails, here and here, and then I need to activate, to power them. Like this, is this powered? Yes. Okay. I also want to power these rails. And these one I will first do um, a direction change because I want to, or in this case, I'm copying this, this uh, system. So in this case, I want to go back in this direction um, and that will go up like this. Here I can power both uh, rail lines with one lever, putting it there. And here there's one case that we still don't consider is uh, it's when when we have um, one minecart hoppers with well four blocker items and one empty slot because uh, the, there were no items on the golden pressure plate anymore. So this can happen rarely, but it can happen. So we have to make a filter there because otherwise, um, well, it's not that bad, but it will go into one, the first slice actually, 
and it will be empty there. And I think when you have an empty minecart here, a minecart hopper here, it depends, but it can be absorbed uh, by, it should, the minecart hopper should be absorbed by this hopper. But when it's empty, sometimes it's absorbed by this hopper and then it will end up in your slide, a uh, slice. And yeah, it's not great. So I just put a new uh, filter in there. So I have uh, one comparator here that is subtracted by a signal of 15. Um, oh, uh, yes, also I forgot uh, you need to have, oops, a normal chest um, somewhere here. That is not not fault, but was that has some uh, minecart hoppers. So when it's the case that the minecart hopper has only four blocker items in one empty slot, it will just absorb a new uh, minecart hopper, and then it will again have a fill level of 15. So here I check if it still has a fill, of, um, um, a fill level of 15, and if it does, uh, I will. Um, divert the rail this rail uh, to the side S and to do this i have one block here one redstone torch here um, and i need to send the signal from here uh, to oh yes i need to put um target block instead of this block, otherwise the redstone dust will not connect. Um, redstone dust, redstone dust, and here I need to have, uh, I think I need to have a comparator. Okay, so I just checked and no, I don't need a comparator there. I can just put the redstone dust here uh, because this is not in subtraction mode, but in comparison mode. Okay, then I need to break the minecart that is diverted. So I will put one barrel here, one uh, hopper here, one hopper here, one hopper, no, sorry, one hopper here. Uh, I also need one hopper here because uh, I take out one minecart hopper, so I need to put it back into the chest. Uh, the truck goes like this, um, and also like this, yep. Yeah. And on top of this hopper, I will have a lava cauldron. Uh, I need a second hopper here with a rail on top. I need to align the minecarts, so with chains. And then I need to put, uh, let's put glass blocks everywhere uh, on the sides so that no item can uh, go out. And I'll put a comp uh, composter here just for lag. Um, and that's it. Uh, I also need to power the rails, obviously. So I put it there because I can't put it on these blocks. Uh, otherwise, I power also the redstone line underneath. And here I can put it uh, here. Well, it's not optimal. Uh, here I can put a redstone block like this. Uh, yeah, should not cause any problems. And so my output is then uh, like this. And here I have only minecart hoppers that are compatible with the slices. So if you do all this, um, you're good. Okay, so I forgot one thing. Um, it's that um, block underneath this detector rail needs to be a glass block. Otherwise, it blockers uh, this hopper and then it interacts with the rest of the system. Um, so I set up a little showcase shortcut box. Uh, I'll just add uh, one unstackable tool just to see what it does. And I put this one in the system and then you will see. So these fill up was for a certain time. Then they are sent on the golden pressure plate. This activates the clock behind. And here we see uh, the minecart hoppers that are of compatible with the slices. So as you can see, there was only 63 um, stakes and here again, 63 um, sugar canes. And there's the, the last stake, the last sugar cane. I think we have one stake still. Okay, maybe I missed it. Um, but you see it works correctly. 
Okay, so the last stake is actually still in the minecart hopper. But uh, I also added here, we'll talk about this later, but a, a way to prevent this. Uh, and also, where is the helmet? Well, the L helmet is ended up in this uh, hopper. And here you can redirect to your unstackable um, storage. Okay, these three are the most important systems. And uh, now I will just discuss some other stuff, but I won't do a block by block tutorial because well, too lazy. <laughs> um, but uh, also it's because actually the way I did it is not necessarily the best way and you can wire everything uh, together as, as you want, depending on the design you want to build. Uh, so yeah, feel free to, to be creative here. Um, so where to begin? Uh, first, uh, I will talk about uh, this uh, safety clock here. So basically the way this works is that it stocks uh, a lot of uh, minecarts in these slots uh, waiting for them to be unloaded. And the thing is when you get really a lot of minecarts waiting there, uh, it can be quite laggy and I don't want, I want to prevent this as much as possible. So what I did is we have this signal, um, redstone signal that is uh, on every slice that indicates that one of the slice is uh, active um, and it's like basically a giant end gate. So this signal go, comes here. Here I have just a pulse lengthener so that uh, if, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the it's unloading for a few, it's uh, unloading and then it stops for a few seconds. So this retracts, but then it's it re-unloads uh, it's basically just to, to be sure that it's really stopped unloading and not just a, uh, um, uh, a short pause. Uh, and if it really stopped unloading, then I send a signal down here. And here we have uh, just a hopper counter. So with the word download and schematics, you can figure out how it works. And it's also really flexible. You can add more counters. If you want to double the time, you can just do this. Uh, and this doubles the time it takes to um, until the system stops. And what happens actually when the system, when the timer is, uh, well, is done, um, it stops. Uh, so it activates this piston and this stops the mine more minecarts from from uh, breaking here so it was just stop this clock here and um so the last items that remain on the trapdoor will still get uh, uh taken but then it's all and then it waits until well, all the all the waiting minecarts are done so all, all these slots are empty, like it is now. And when all of these are empty, then it will restart and restart the counter also. Uh, so this is good because if you have, for example, the worst case scenario in terms of, of sorting speed is just to sort the shulker like this. So just one item type, because then you will have basically a lot of, of minecart hoppers that will wait here and they will wait for quite a long time because it's only, uh, well, to hopper speed and the input is way faster than that. Uh, so in this case, you want actually to stop the, the system for quite a long time. So you will keep it running for two or three minutes, then you will have 60 to 100 minecarts here. And then uh, you want to wait until all the 60 are consumed to send it again for three or three, uh, two or three minutes. So basically the waiting time will be, I don't know, like 25 minutes. So Okay, the whole system will be really slow, but at least you will assure that uh, there are not too many minecarts in there. In the best case scenario, so something more like this, where you have all different types of items, um, then actually it won't stop for really long. If you have this for like a uh, hundred shulkers like this, um, then it might stop at some point because there are always a few uh, minecarts that are stocked somewhere, uh, but then it will stop stop for like a few seconds because then uh, all the minecart will the last minecarts will be like treated because the system speed is slower than the individual slice speed 
and uh, then it will restart after a few seconds. So this this stopping here is really not a problem at this point. Um, but yeah, just as a tip, if you have a lot of shortcuts like this, consider just sorting them manually because uh, it will take quite some time with this system. Uh, and if you are someone that is really unorganized like me and has a lot of shortcuts like this uh, after projects, um, well, obviously not uh, with spawning it, but something like this, then this, show, this system is really good because it will go extremely fast with all the parallel sorting going on. Then there's something I didn't talk about, but is, which is really important, is uh, this clock right here. Uh, so as you can see, we have these uh, observer uh, line here that uh, I show you in the, um, in the slices is uh, so this observer line here and this observer line here that uh, activates the pistons uh, all the time. And uh, so basically I have the line that goes through all the slices and then I just put some rails because it's better for lag and faster also uh, to transmit the signal to the other slices and then here to the other slices and then here to the last wall of slices and here it ends um, and this needs to be activated and deactivated accordingly uh, so here i put this uh, hopper um sorry i put a, a clock that is i think the same timing as the the clock back there uh, but actually this you can do whatever you want you can put well i would advise you to make it longer not shorter um, if you make it lo longer um, well it will react a bit slower maybe but i don't think it matters that much but which what is great is you will have less piston movement and this means better fps performance so this doesn't really affect the lag uh, but it's really bad for the client fps uh, so when it's working and you uh, have shaders for example it can be pretty yeah difficult to play when this is uh, activated all the time so you can do this longer and also this clock uh, as it is now is stopped because it is actually only active when the whole system is active so this is basically a signal uh, piston and the signal comes from this uh, central um, activation clock or a pulse length like timer activation timer i don't know how to call it um, but basically when this is on it means that the portal loader is on it means that it's currently doing stuff it means that the lamp here will be on to indicate that it's doing stuff and it also means that the piston chain up there is on so basically it's the it's the on switch of the whole system it's automatic it goes on whenever it does something it goes out whenever it stops doing something and it activates all the the secondary systems of the of the system uh, i said i come back to the problem i had here um, basically in theory these slices should have a reset time of a bit less than 40 ticks game ticks um, so in theory, a 40 game tick clock here, so this would be something like this with a time of, uh, of repeater uh, set to one tick here, sh should work, but it didn't for some reason, or more precisely, it did work for the first wall, for the second wall, and somewhere here it started not working anymore because of some strange hopper behavior down there that I didn't understand. Uh, I won't go much deeper into this uh, because it would be maybe a bit long to explain. But yeah, I have no idea what happens there somewhere. Uh, so the fix I found is just to slow it down to uh, 48 ticks, I think it is. Yeah, 48 ticks, which is still fast. But yeah, I don't really know. This is like still an open question if someone finds something interesting. Uh, let me know. Uh, so we talked about the safety clock. Uh, yeah, just for information, this is optional, obviously. Uh, we talked about this clock. This is not optional. This you need to have, but you can do it as long as you want. Um, 
And then, yeah, let's talk a bit about this uh, central clock. Uh, so where does it take the signal? It takes the signal from different places. Um, it takes the signal partly from here. So basically, if there are items on a pressure plate, then the system is walking, it's doing something. So we send a signal here, this torch goes on, and then we um, we we switch on to this this indication. Um, another signal is if this block, redstone block is uh, up there. So basically, if the um, one of the slices here is currently walking, so if one redstone block here is down uh, and all of this is down, then it's doing something. So it's still sorting, means that the lights are on somewhere. Um, so it's doing something, so it needs to activate also the clock. Um, and I think that's all. Yep, that's all. And when um, when when it goes on, as I said, it activates the portal loader, the lamp, and uh, the the piston chain on top. And when it goes out, it uh, also does things. It activates one last time the these uh, minecarts because, as we can we have seen there, uh, there was one item still stuck in these hopper minecarts. So I just say, well, when you when this goes out, so when everything is done, still check, like send a new uh, new minecart hopper, just to be sure that we have all the items. And if there's nothing there, just will loop again, and then it's finished, really done. Okay, so the last thing to talk about are all the pipes and item transportation. Um, so we will start at the input here. Uh, so I won't show you how to build this block by block uh, first because it's not an ideal system, it's very flexible, but I will talk about every component uh, and you can implement it as well as you like it. Um, so basically I know that already, but you can put um, e either items in the shulker box and then send the shulker box uh, by pressing on this uh, Button or put four uh, shulker boxes in the bo in the chest like that. Um, the thing is, this was I did it very quickly and I didn't want to think too much. Uh, and what can happen actually is if you break the shulker box, it's so there's a num uh, hopper underneath this carpet. But uh, sometimes it happens that the shulker box breaks and end up on top of the carpet here, so on the, the floor. And then you would have to pick it up manually and put it in a chest. It's kind of annoying. I didn't want to uh, spend so much time on it, so I didn't fix it. But um, just so you know. Um, so the mechanics are very simple. There's a piston underneath, uh, piston underneath the button with an observer that uh, powers this uh, block. And here there is a dispenser uh, so that it dispenses the next shulker. And on to underneath this carpet is a piston so that it breaks this shulker. Uh, whoops. Okay. Uh, then there are some very important elements in this. Uh, so, of course, the empty shulker refilling system. So basically here I have uh, hoppers in the water stream and whenever this uh, comparator goes off, then it sends a signal, uh, whoops, it sends a signal there and it activates a small timer to send some items from the uh, from the shulker storage, so it will just uh, pull just some items. I actually can show you that. As if we take out the two last shulkers, you will see this clock activating and just send a batch of shulkers. I think twice. Yeah, it does it twice for activation and disactivation. Doesn't really matter. It just fills in six new shulkers, empty shulkers, and yeah, that's all. Um. Then we have, uh, so the um, full shulkers that need to be sorted go into this hopper and then into this dropper. And then they are filtered out uh, via this uh, shulker. 
because we definitely don't want any items to end up in the unloader here because if we have items basically well it will break this system so we have to filter out items because it's possible that we forget or just we do a wrong um like an arrow and we put some uh, not items in this chest and they will be, be pulled out but then they will be sent back to you because it's not good you don't want any items in the system and so this is basically what this uh shulker filter does so this is basically uh well we don't see it here but there's um, a dropper uh behind it that uh tries to push the items into the shulker uh, if it manages then the items are sent up again and otherwise there's a hop underneath uh, that uh, sends the um, shulker boxes to uh, this unloader. Uh, quick note, if the shulker box is empty, it doesn't matter, it will be sent into the unloader and it will just be just like this right immediately here. It's not an issue, it will be sent to the uh, shulker storage anyway, e either way. Okay, so as I said, you can customize this as you wish um, and yeah, fit it where, wherever you want the input to be. You can also put multiple ad inputs, it's not a problem. Um, and so we talked about the green pipe that is sending the full shocker boxes, like the shocker boxes that has to have to be sorted uh, into the loading mechanism. Uh, we talked uh, about this uh, magenta um, pipe that just refills the, uh, sh the shocker box and actually I'll just talk quickly about the other part because there's two paths uh, it can take. So there the shulker goes to uh, this system. But whenever um, the bulk slices need new shulker boxes, because basically if you fill up one shulker box here, then there needs to be a new shulker box that is displayed. So you'd need to have a, um, a supply of shulker boxes here. So here we have basically a stock. And if this runs out, it does the same thing, so it sends a signal down and it will uh, also ac activate this piston and disactivate this piston so that all the shulker boxes can go uh, up this water stream and into this storage there. Um, obviously this indicates like the amount, the filling amount of shulker boxes, so you always want to be somewhere in the middle because if you have too much then you cannot uh, fill it more and if you have, well, not enough then you're running out of shulker boxes. Then we have this gray pipe here. So this takes uh, on one part the unstackable items. So they will be sent into the pipe and then up here and then uh, filling the, the chest from here to here. Um, and uh, this will also take in the this stream here which is uh, the overflow line of the whole system. So every, if one slice, if any slice actually is, is full, then all the items that additional items will go through this line and then will be sent in the same storage. So this, this wall here will be filled with uh, unstackables, but also uh, whenever there is um, uh, a full level uh, slice, then the additional eight items will end up here. Um, and then we have the brown uh, pipe, uh, so the largest one that actually simply collects all the minecarts and send them back. So there are like eight different locations where minecarts, hopper minecarts can uh, come into the, the pipes and they all end up uh, well in the same location. So in this uh, giant minecart hopper um, storage system. And finally, we also have the, the blue uh, pipe, uh, which takes the empty shulkers of uh, the loading mechanism. So every time you unload a full shulker, then you uh, put it in the blue pipe, and then it goes uh, in the input of this uh, empty shulker storage. So that's it guys, you should have all the information you need to build the system on your side and I hope you also have some understanding on how it works. Um, I didn't go into every detail because the goal is that it's still uh, like flexible, you could adjust whatever you want and you should actually uh, customize it uh, as you like it. 
And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, helped you. And thanks a lot for watching this very long video.